Welcome to the Interlocked Bible Study. We're on Lesson 45. This is the second part of this lesson, and we are covering the time and period of uh, the church age in our study, and we're clarifying the difference between Israel and the church. You and I today are a part of God's plan for the church, the ecclesia, uh, the gathering of, of individuals from all nations from around the world, from different language groups and ethnicities. And uh, the plan, God's plan for Israel uh, began back with Abraham uh, and continues to this present day and has yet future events that God promised would happen. And so we are confident that when God promises something, that he will indeed fulfill that promise. So in our last uh, recording, we, we began introducing uh, some of these four different points that are key for us to understand the difference between God's plan for Israel and then God's plan for, for the church. We'll be covering in full God's plan for the church in Lesson 46, but uh, God's plan for Israel, we've divided into these four sections that you see in the screen before you. And uh, it, it's, it's Israel's future is controlled by God's covenant. So we've been talking about in our last recording what those covenants are, how it was one Abrahamic covenant, and then God had uh, these sub sub uh, covenants or, or um, expansion on the one covenant, uh, the three different areas, specifically dealing with land, uh, dealing with uh, a worldwide blessing, um, and uh, and uh, and just giving detail on these different areas. So God God expanded on those in these these three these covenants that He's made, <clears throat> and so that Israel's future is controlled by these. He He uses His word as the maximum authority and parameter and framework by which he operates. Uh, you can see a human comparison when a an organization, which could be a business or a church or governments, uh, they set forth a law or a, a covenant, if you will, um, uh, and, and the country or the business operates on the basis of those bylaws. And in a similar way, uh, God established his plan. He established it with Abraham, and now he's carrying out and working within those parameters. So we uh, are also going to be talking about how uh, God delays this kingdom plan uh, that was uh, set forth with Israel uh, to be his representatives here on earth. He delays this due to Israel's rebellion. And uh, the time of the Gentiles was ushered in. And to this day, we are still part of this time of the Gentiles. Uh, until such a time when God will reinstate his plan with Israel. So that goes to point number three, Israel will come to believe. They will come to embrace their Messiah um, and recognize Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And But it's going to have to happen as God has predetermined and predicted in his word that it will, um, a great tribulation will come upon Israel and uh, consequently the entire earth uh, in order to bring this repentance and purging of the, the Jewish people and nation in preparation for the kingdom. And then uh, lastly, God fulfills all of his covenants and promises to Israel at the very start uh, of the kingdom of God. So you can see, kind of picture that visually in the chart before you. And so that's the timeline that we're, we're noticing that God has, has pre, uh, uh, predestined. He's, he's set in motion through his sovereignty and yet uh, has has allowed for man to exercise free will within his overarching plan and covenants. 
Um, so, uh, um, so these these are the different. Uh, uh, for the framework is to helping us understand God's plan for Israel. And where we left off was in this very first point, talking about the covenants. And uh, so we talked about within these covenants that uh, national Israel will finally be able to enjoy the blessing of the Mosaic covenant. God said, you do this, you'll get this blessing. If you don't do this, you'll get cursing. So the blessing side of Israel's um, covenant, uh, God with Israel and, and their contract together, will be um, enjoyed because Israel will finally have the capacity that they didn't have before as a nation to be responsive to God and his word and to enter into a relationship and to um, love the Lord, their God, with all their heart, their soul, their mind, their strength, and to love others uh, as as um, as they love themselves. So you see the law uh, fulfilled through the nation of Israel in this particular time frame of the kingdom when this covenant is fully fulfilled. Uh, and so the Mosaic blessings that, that are promised there, Israel is going to finally experience that and, and enjoy it. Also, we covered that Abraham's family will finally be the worldwide blessing that Yahweh had promised. And Israel, as you recall in our study of their history, um, refrained and refused to really go out into all the nations spreading this gospel, this good news of relationship with Yahweh, that he's the creator of the universe and and longs for a relationship with him, that there's reconciliation with him through the, the sacrifice of uh, the shedding of a, the, the blood of an innocent lamb until such a time as, as the Messiah could bring a permanent permanent solution to this issue. So now uh, Abraham and his family, the, the Israelites, uh, can be that fulfillment. So, so by, by, through the fulfillment of these covenants, uh, Israel will also be obtaining and, and accessing all of the blessings that came along with the promises. So aside from these two uh, uh, benefits that were for Israel, that come from Jesus signing the new covenant. Uh, there's one more uh, of, of the, uh, what's that called? The, the fulfillment that is of huge importance to the rest of the world because of the cross. So Israel is benefiting hugely from, from Christ, his death on the cross, his signing of this new covenant. Now, now you're going to see that the blessing is, it expands far beyond Israel and is extended to the Gentile nations. All the ethnicities of the world are blessed. So, so Jesus' death uh, on the cross made it possible for all mankind, and, and we're talking about from Adam onward to the present and to, to, to the last human is born, uh, so that there is ex access to the forgiveness of sin. And to be once again reconciled or reunited, reconnected to the giver of life, Yahweh. So this new covenant uh, came with promises of forgiveness of sins and a new heart that could obey and love God. And it, was, and it was only made for Israel and Judah. So this new covenant that God made with his people was only for Israelites, not for non-Israelites. God did not make the new covenant for you and I who are from Gentile nations. We are beneficiaries of his covenant with Israel. So the question remains then well how how would non-jews like you and i uh and from the old testament people like adam and eve and noah and enoch melchizedek and all the gentiles throughout history uh, how is it that they received how do we receive these this forgiveness of sin from god well the amazing thing is that when jesus died on the cross that one event unexpectedly achieved uh, these very, very important results of both salvation for Israel and salvation for the, the, the Gentiles. 
So how is it that that God uh, promised this and re- achieved these results? Well, let's let's look at how Yahweh, in His Word in the Old Testament, described the these these two major accomplishments that the Messiah did. Um, uh, and and he's in this passage, he's calling the Messiah my servant. Okay, let's look at Isaiah chapter forty-two, verses one to six. Look at my servant whom I strengthen. He is my chosen one who pleases me. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or raise his voice in public. He will not crush the weakest reed or put out a flickering candle. He will bring justice to all who have been wronged. He will not falter or lose heart until justice prevails throughout the earth. Even distant lands beyond the sea will wait for his instruction. God, the the Lord, created the heavens and stretched them out. He created the earth and everything in it. He gives breath to everyone, life to everyone who walks the earth. And it is he who says, I, the Lord, have called you to demonstrate my righteousness. I will take you by the hand and guard you, and I will give you my people Israel as a symbol of my covenant with them, and you will be a light to guide the nations. The Messiah uh, also said, okay, uh, the same uh, when, when he spoke the following passage in Isaiah 49, verses 5 to 6. And now the Lord speaks, the one who formed me in my mother's womb to be his servant, who commissioned me to bring Israel back to him. The Lord has honored me and my God has given me strength. He says, you will do more, more than restore the people of Israel to me. I will make you a light to the Gentiles and you will bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. So you you notice and you look at the screen in front of you with this passage, how in the blue we have how how the the death of Jesus Christ and and his obedience to the Father in accomplishing our redemptive plan, the, the redemptive plan of mankind that he set in motion through the Messiah, he not only fulfills and 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 sets in motion. This and, and as a signator to this new covenant that he's offering to the people of Israel, but he's saying that this new covenant has other beneficiaries as well. Uh, he'll the Messiah uh, will be a light to guide the nations, ethnos, the ethnicities of of the world. That includes you and me. And then in, in Isaiah forty nine, the it, you see that he's commissioned to bring Israel back. Okay, implying that they have have like the the prodigal son uh, distanced themselves from Yahweh, which is historically has happened, and God and His Messiah has brought Israel back uh, through this new covenant. And then on top of that, He says, "You will do more than just restore the people of Israel to Me. I'm going to make you a light to the Gentiles." And I'll bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. And this is exactly the time frame which you and I are in right here, right now, as at the time of this recording, 2,000 years after the uh, the coming of the Messiah, the fulfillment of the this the the signing of this um, of this new covenant and his resurrection from from death, and then the initiation of the church age. Now you're seeing the nations, all ethnicities of the world, accessing accessing the gospel, this this good news of reconciliation to back to Yahweh. And it's it's not yet uh, fully accomplished. And that's why there's this this extra uh, strong thrust of the ecclesia, the church of Jesus Christ today, pushing into the least reached people groups of the planet Earth, the whole to get that all uh, 12,000 plus language groups and ethnicities around the world have full access to the gospel in their heart language 
and Bible translations so that they can walk with God in newness of life. So you have this missional thrust happening in the church today as a consequence of uh, the Messiah's work in, 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 the, in the new covenant. So uh, does this does this mean that uh, um, that Jesus um, uh, you know that, that he's rejected the Jews or that uh, that uh, the, now the new covenant is only for non-Jews? No, not at all. His plan with Israel continues in motion. To this day, and and it is so concreted in stone, or even more stronger than stone, is the very word of God. It is unchanging and immovable and unbreakable because it's Yahweh saying it, and He is not a liar. Uh, because it's so set in stone, He made these promises that the that the full fulfillment and completion of the the new covenant with Israel will indeed come to pass. And it has not to this present day come to pass. We see the, that Christ has signed the, the, the new contract. He said with uh, the disciples in the, the upper room in the Last Supper, it's known, um, this is my covenant. This blood represents my, the, my covenant with you, this new covenant. Um, this is my body. The bread here represents my body. And so you, you see Christ initiating this with the Jewish people, uh, this new covenant, signing uh, signing, and making sure it's it's contractual. And he's, he's going to fulfill his side of the bargain. But because the nation of Israel rejected Christ, the Messiah, not the, not the disciples, the disciples embraced him and accepted him wholeheartedly, except for one known as Judas, but they accepted him wholeheartedly. Um, the nation of Israel rejected the Messiah. And so Jesus initiated uh, this church uh, time, this ecclesia, where uh, there, the the, uh, the nation of of ethnicities around the world, the Gentile peoples, could also it, receive some of the benefits of this new covenant, which involves the forgiveness of sin, the changed hearts, and in this this uh, chart you see before you in the screen, uh, it demonstrates how Israel was promised land. And that promise of land and property was not given or granted to you and I as, as members of God's church, this ecclesia, in this time frame. Can you buy and sell land? Of course. But he has not, has not promised you and I property, uh, or nor specifically the land of Israel to us, the ecclesia, the church. Only for Israel is this plan uh, made uh, promised and will, will be fulfilled at the time of the, the establishment of the kingdom of God uh, physically here on earth through their Messiah, Jesus Christ. And, I, and it's better to said our Messiah because we too as Gentiles have indeed embraced him. Um, embrace this this uh, new covenant that he's he's offered uh, to mankind and and are now beneficiaries of. So it does not mean that the Gentiles are part of this new covenant. We're we're not uh, um, uh, we're not the signatories of the new covenant. We're not part of the new covenant. Uh, and it does not mean that that God broke the the terms of the new covenant. Uh, with Israel because he included Gentiles in as beneficiaries of this covenant. And it does not mean that God abandons Israel and replaces them with the Gentiles. And he only means that the Gentiles to benefit from, from the forgiveness of sins and change heart doesn't mean that. Uh, what, what God is doing is offering this to, uh, to Israel. They rejected it. Now Gentiles are, are, are benefited from benefiting from these promises in a tremendous way. And with a huge, massive blessing is, has come upon the Gentile nations as a consequence of Israel's rejection. Uh, so let's look at uh, what the prophet Jeremiah recorded uh, along these lines in chapter 33, verses 23 to 26. He says, um, the Lord gave uh, another message to Jeremiah. He said, 
have you noticed what people are saying? The Lord chose Judah and Israel and then abandoned them. They are sneering and saying that Israel is not worthy to be counted as a nation. But this is what the Lord says. I would no more reject my people than I would change my laws that govern night and day, earth and sky. I will never abandon the descendants of Jacob or David, my servant, or change the plan that David's descendants will rule the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Instead, I will restore them to their land and have mercy on them. Wow. That If that isn't overly and abundantly clear that God is absolutely not done with Israel, has not uh, rejected them, uh, he, he will restore them. They are in a similar situation as the story that Jesus told of the prodigal son where they have distanced themselves from God, they in turn have abandoned God, not God abandoned them. Um, As many people point their fingers at God and blame him for all of the evils of the world. No, Israel as a nation, nation of Israel, has has distanced themselves from Yahweh uh, and his word by rejecting his Messiah. And, con- and there's consequences to that rejection. And fortunately for us, we ha- are beneficiaries of Israel's distancing. Uh, we get to, as the elder son of, of, the, uh, uh, of the, the story of the prodigal son, uh, we are beneficiaries. Um, we live under the protection of, of the father and his household while the son is gone. Um, so you, uh, Yahweh, His whole character and nature is bound to the fulfillment of these contractual uh, relationship between Israel. So he is not by any means going to break his covenant. He's going to fulfill it. Let's look at what Isaiah uh, Isaiah says about it in chapter 54, verses 9 to 10. Just as I swore in the time of Noah that I would never again let a flood cover the earth, so now I swear that I will never again be angry and punish you for the mountains may move and the hills disappear. But even then my faithful love for you will remain. My covenant of blessing will never be broken, says the Lord who has mercy on you. So God, just as God has is fulfilling and, and has fulfilled the promise of Noah, uh, he is also uh, committing to fulfilling the promise of this new covenant that he's making with Israel. And God can indeed be trusted. So with his death on the cross, Jesus signs this new covenant for Israel and Judah. Uh, and, and But with his death on the cross, Jesus, Jesus also provides salvation to anyone who trusts in him. The promises of forgiveness and a changed heart apply to anyone in the world who believes in the Messiah. What's more, the cross is the only way for mankind to be reconciled to Yahweh forever. So it's it's amazing how how God how God has has orchestrated setting setting him putting himself under obligation bound to his own word to keep his word and to operate within that framework within the framework of Israel promises to Israel he has extended blessing to the Gentile nations to you and I. So what type of, uh, of covenant is the new covenant? Well, it's, it's similar to the, the Abrahamic contract in that it's, it's uh, unconditional, um, but it's also a subcontract. Uh, again, God, God is the guarantor. Uh, he guarantees it that it will be fulfilled. He's, he's the one who signs it. And it was made with the national Israel and not individual Jews. I hope that is clear. I've mentioned it several times. These covenants are with the with the entire uh, uh, group of Israel, the nation, and not just with the individual Jews. However, individual Jews would only benefit from it through faith in God alone. Um, so you see that in today's day, um, the uh, by the nation rejecting the, their Messiah. 
today individual Jewish people can indeed experience some of these blessings, the blessing of forgiveness of sin, the blessing of the, the law of God being placed in their hearts, the presence of the Holy Spirit in their hearts. Um, and also, uh, they have a land, a piece of property in, in the Middle East that is theirs for the keeping later on. Uh, they can begin taking possession of it now, but uh, the, the fulfillment and, and, and guarantee that they will hold that property forever, for all of eternity, uh, is, is after the Messiah comes and takes possession and takes leadership of the nation. So we've seen and reviewed how Israel's future is controlled by God's covenants with them. Um, but what else do we know about God's plan for Israel? And now we're going to go into this, this second stage where God is going to delay the kingdom due to Israel's rebellion. Let's go into a little bit of detail about this rebellion and this delay of the kingdom, which you and I are today beneficiaries of. So Jesus offers this at, at his first advent, his first coming, uh, as he was born as a baby, grew up in, the, in Joseph and Mary's family, and, uh, and, and, and ministered here on earth. He offers the kingdom in, in this time frame as, as both man and God, human, God in human form. So in Matthew 4, 17, it says it this way, from then on, Jesus began to preach, repent for your, for, of your sins and turn to God for the kingdom of heaven is near. So, so Jesus is saying, guys, it's right here. I, I'm in the midst of you. He doesn't bluntly say, hey, I am the Messiah. I'm in your midst. If you just put a crown on my head uh, and, 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 and then cause this, uh, this civil war to happen within. No, that's, that wasn't Jesus' methodology. Um, he offered first what was key to God, what was most important to Yahweh, and that is repentance from sin and turning back to God, turning back to Yahweh and, and, and looking to his Messiah uh, for the establishment of his kingdom and all the promises that come with that. So it's really close to you guys. The kingdom of heaven is near. It's John the Baptist, that, that was his job, preaching the same message uh, and saying, hey, the Messiah is coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's, he's almost here. And then John actually said, behold, the Lamb of God. Here he is. He, he's come. And, uh, and the voice comes down from heaven at the point of baptism from the Father, Yahweh, uh, saying, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Um, and Holy Spirit comes and, and, and dwells uh, Jesus Christ and, and, and guides him. And he's led by the Holy Spirit throughout his entire ministry on earth. And so you've got this, this uh, uh, setting up for success for the nation of Israel. But Israel does not repent. Israel rejects. They rebel, just like their ancestors did every time the, the, the prophets would come. That's why as, as Jesus' ministry progressed, he got more and more just in your face and direct with the, the, the leadership of uh, the Jewish people, uh, real specifically the religious leaders. And saying, you guys, you, you, you're, you're stubborn. Uh, you're whitewashed uh, uh, tombs and sepulchers. You, you look pretty from the outside, but inside you're full of dead man's bones. You, you don't, you, you are faithless men and women and, and uh, repent. <laughs> and these guys who are self-righteous saying, no, we're, we're cool. We're good to go. Um, uh, and we have our, our, our expectation of what a Messiah looks like, and you certainly don't look like that. And so they rejected Jesus Christ, um, and they rejected his message. They rejected Yahweh. Um, so what, uh, what does this rejection then mean for Israel and, and, and then uh, and Jesus deciding then to start the, the church age? Well, first, we're going to go through two real key points. Uh, first, the Bible tells us that during this church age, God set aside national Israel because of their rebellion. So their Israel is is shelled. Uh, they they're on time out. They're benched. Okay, how how else can I put that? Uh, the, God's plan for Israel 
is benched. It doesn't mean that God is not involved in Israel's decisions and, and God is still sovereign and remains on the throne. But the focus of Yahweh, the focus of Jesus Christ, the focus of the Holy Spirit of God and, and, and the drive and mission of God and the fulfillment to bless all the nations around the world through the message and preaching of the gospel is happening today through the Gentile nations and the few Jews that have also embraced Jesus Christ as their Messiah and that pertain to this ecclesia, this body of Christ. So that's the first thing. We'll go into more detail on that. And then the secondly, just as an introduction, we'll go into more detail, is that uh, while uh, the, the national Israel has been benched and set aside, individual Gentiles and individual Jews can both come together and put their faith in Christ for salvation thus forming one single team uh, uh, playing together while, while uh, Israel's bench, um, these other guys are going into the field and, and kicking and playing ball and, and, and making the goals and fulfilling the, the, the mission and the commission of Christ. So let's go into more detail about uh, Israel getting benched because of their rebellion. Uh, let's read Romans chapter three and, and then chapter nine, some of the verses from there. Paul's writing this, and he's saying, what, what's then the advantage of being a Jew if all this stuff has happened? Well, what's the, what's, what's the advantage? What are the perks of being a Jew? Uh, is there any value in the ceremony of circumcision? Yes, there are great benefits. First of all, the Jews were entrusted with the whole revelation of God. This is a big deal. The Jews were the ones that got to take God's word, record it, and preserve the word of God, and then to preach it to the nation. So, wow, that's a, that's a huge deal. And then they are the people of Israel. The, they are the people of Israel chosen to be God's adopted children. Uh, so, man, um, they, they are crucial in God's plan, central, pivotal. God revealed his glory to them. And what's, what's greater than that? To see the glory of the creator of the universe. He made covenants with them. Man, I mean, the Jewish people, they, they've got it all. I don't know why they just rejected all this stuff, but they've got so huge, tremendous privileges. He made covenants with them and he gave them his law. Uh, he gave them the privilege of worshiping him and receiving his wonderful promises. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are their ancestors, and Christ himself was an Israelite. Christ himself was an Israelite as far as his human nature is concerned, and he is God. And no one who rules over everything, and, and the one who rules over everything and is worthy of eternal praise. Amen. So Israel's just showered with tons of blessings. Did they value the blessings? Well, unfortunately, no, not as a nation. So instead of being faithful and responding uh, uh, to the faithfulness of God in their life, uh, they rebelled. They wanted more, just like Eve back in the garden. It wasn't enough that God gave her everything that she could possibly dream of and want. And she just had to have that one fruit that she couldn't have. And Israel's, Israel is like that as well. Unfortunately, you and I have that propensity as Gentile believers in Jesus Christ. Why? Because we like our, our, our ancestor Eve and Adam. Where we are, uh, we were bent to, to, to have that one thing that we can't have and covet it. And so anyway, uh, instead of being obedient, they, they rejected. Uh, and, and, and so now with Israel being set aside, God's focusing on inviting the Gentiles to believe in him and to temporarily take over their role of being a worldwide blessing, to be missionaries to the pagan world and the pagan culture, to be agents of change. And so consequently, it creates jealousy in the Jews when they see all this blessing happening to the Gentiles, like, man, I want some of that. So picture yourself, you're playing football uh, and, and the coach benched you and you're seeing all these guys out or, and people out in the field having a blast and the, the crowds are cheering and, and you're just like, man, I, I can do that. I want to do that. And, and so you get jealous and you're like, I want to be. I want to be that person who just put in the goal 
or who who uh, who who ran the um, uh, the 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 ball to the, the the end zone if it's American football or or worldwide football. So uh, you get jealous and you want to be a part of that. It's like, man, I, and so God's saying, I, I'm wanting to draw Israel into the, the action uh, by creating jealousy, jealousy of the blessings that I'm giving the, the, the non-Jews, the, the other ethnicities around the world. So Paul, Paul goes into detail on this specific issue. He says it in Romans chapter 11, like this. So this is the situation. Most of the people of Israel have not found favor, the favor of God they are looking for so earnestly. A few have, the ones God has chosen. But the hearts of the rest were hardened, as the scriptures say. God has put them into a deep sleep. To this day, he has shut their eyes so that they do not see. And closed their ears so they do not hear. Likewise, David said, they let their bountiful table become a snare, a trap that makes them think all as well. Let their blessing cause them to stumble and let them get what they deserve. Uh, let their eyes go blind so they cannot see and let their backs be bent forever. Did God's people stumble and fall beyond recovery? Of course not. So this is Paul, a Jew, the Jew of Jews. Uh, who's also ministering to the Gentiles. He's like, no, no, okay. Uh, no, they, they're not beyond recovery. He says they, are, they were disobedient, so God made salvation available to the Gentiles. But he wanted his own people to become jealous and claim it for themselves. Now, if the Gentiles were enriched because of the people of Israel, turned down uh, God's offer of salvation. Think how much greater a blessing the world will share when they finally accept it. So uh, great will be the day, huge and tremendous rejoicing when Israel, God's very own, turn to him. That is going to be a wonderful, wonderful blessing for the entire earth, all the ethnicities. Right now, we're just getting a glimpse of it through the Gentiles, but it's nothing like we are going to see when Israel turns to, to their Messiah. Let's continue reading in verse 13. Am I saying that all this especially for you Gentiles? I am saying all this for you Gentiles. Now, God has appointed me as the apostle to the Gentiles. I stress this for I want somehow... Uh, to make the people of Israel jealous of what you Gentiles have. So I might save some of them. Okay, so Paul wants the consequence of their jealousy to turn to repentance of individuals and, and some of them be saved. Okay, verse 15. For since their rejection meant that God offered salvation to the rest of the world, their acceptance will be even more wonderful. It will be life for those who were dead. And since Abraham and the other patriarchs were holy, their descendants will also be holy, just as the entire batch of dough is holy because the portion given as, a, as an offering is holy. For if the root of the tree, if the roots of the tree are holy, the branches will be too. But some of these branches from Abraham's tree, some of the people from Israel, have been broken off. And you Gentiles, who were branches from a wild olive tree, have been grafted in. So now you also receive the blessing God has promised Abraham and his children, sharing in the rich nourishment from the root of God's special olive tree. Finally, let's wrap this, this uh, long passage up of Romans 11, verse 18. But you must not brag about being grafted into the into the in, in to replace the branches that were broken off you're just a branch not the root okay let's jump to verse 23 and if the people of israel turn from their unbelief they will be grafted in again for god has the power to graft them back into the tree you by nature were a branch cut from a wild olive tree so if God was willing to do something contrary to nature by grafting you into his cultivated tree, he will be far more eager to graft the original branches back into the tree where they belong. 
Okay, a lot of talk of grafting here and, and comparison of Israel and, and the church, but let, let's go into this picture a little bit, and, and then we'll bring this this lesson, uh, this section of the lesson lesson to conclusion. But in this picture, Paul he uses this this picture uh, and, and talking about worldwide blessing of the Abrahamic covenant uh, as the root of the tree. So the olive tree is Israel itself. And that's that's talked about in Jeremiah chapter 11, verses 16 to 17. And they were supposed to be the channel of God's blessing to the world, but they're and they're supposed to be God's missionaries to go out through all the world and spread the gospel. Jews were supposed to be living among every ethnicity of the world, but they didn't do that. They didn't do that. And but and because of their rebellion, God is currently judging them. And so they've been broken off, um, and instead, the Gentiles have been grafted in, allowed to, to be nourished from the, that uh, root of blessing, uh, and to now uh, take this gospel, this good news of life, everlasting life, to all the nations around the world, to every ethnic group in the world. So, guys, this is a huge warning to you and I. Don't don't deny the Great Commission. Are you a part of it? If you're not, get get moving, get being a part. And I'm not talking about now. You have to move at your the stage of life in your end. You have to move to an African continent or to the uh, uh, jungles of Papua New Guinea. Uh, many do, but. If you can't do that, then how are you supporting? How are you engaged? How are you, how are you helping that person or those people and those individuals in the church of Jesus Christ engage in these least reached people groups of the world? If you're not being a blessing to the nations, then what are you doing? What are you doing? I mean, think about uh, the book of Ephesians, how, how uh, the, the, the entire book is talking about blessing, the, the blessings of spiritual blessings that are preserved for us in, in, in heavenly realms are that secure, but have been granted to us today. We've been given access to all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. What are you doing with it? Are you just hoarding it and enjoying it and getting spiritually uh, saturated and fat? for lack of exercise, or are you and I exercising the spiritual gifts and blessing that we have and giving to others and not growing obese spiritually, but, but uh, we're exercising, we're working, we're, we're serving, we're being a blessing, we're giving it away. We're sharing the blessed hope of Jesus Christ to the nations. So if in Paul's warning us, guys, if, if God, if God was willing to break off the original branch, uh, don't get cocky and think that he's not going to uh, do that to the wild olive branch and regraft in the original. Uh, so don't get cocky, he's saying. Uh, rather, fulfill uh, this blessing for which you were called to uh, and why you were granted salvation. It wasn't just so you could be wealthy and and healthy and 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 just uh, have a good old time. Uh, we in, we have a good old time uh, as we go out uh, and are busy with our Father's mission and purpose. So God has not abandoned the nation Israel, uh, and in the future through this new covenant, He's going to take up this plan again and and regraft them in, and it's going to happen at the end of this church age and and the and, and there's going to be this tremendous period of trials and difficulty which is described in the book of revelation but um very scary things will happen here on earth that will bring repentance uh by israel and Israel will be allowed those who believe and trust in Yahweh will be allowed to continue on into the kingdom of God, where then all um, the, 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 the promises of the new covenant will be fulfilled by the Messiah. So right now, Israel's been benched, and um, uh, when our time has come to a close, uh, we call that a rapture, 
uh, when we are taken up into heaven, we'll go into more detail that, into that later, um, uh, then God will take up his plan again with Israel. Meanwhile, we are to be a worldwide blessing. And, and let's not deny our roles and responsibilities. So uh, we're, we're going to close with this second uh, aspect, and that is that uh, salvation then was provided. Because Israel was benched, now salvation is provided for individual Jews and individual Gentiles. No longer is it a national thing. It's not like the USA has a covenant with God. No, there is no such thing. Um, Honduras has a covenant with God. No, that doesn't exist. Um, uh, Mozambique has a covenant with God. No, we're not talking about nations and political uh, countries. Israel, God's nation, has been benched. So now we're talking about the individuals from all these different ethnicities who are part of different political governments around the world um, can be brought in to a single unit called the church, a single family. Um, and, uh, and, and this was known as a mystery, something unknown, and Paul calls it the church. He also said that it was a mystery. It was unpredicted. No one knew about it. This was something that Jesus Christ ushered in because the Jews rejected, and then the Holy Spirit leads uh, the, the charge and has been for these past 2,000 years, as we've gone over in prior lessons. So real quickly, let's look at some of the concentrated passages that, uh, that focus on this, this unified uh, ethnicity uh, that's called a new people. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 to 7, put it like this by the Apostle Paul. He says, when I think of all this, I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus for the benefit of you Gentiles, assuming, by the way, that you know God gave me the special responsibility of extending his grace to you Gentiles, as I briefly wrote earlier, God himself revealed his mysterious plan to me, this mystery. As you read what I have written, you will understand my own insight, my insight into this plan regarding Christ. God did not reveal it to previous generations, but now has, or but, but now by his spirit, he has revealed it to his holy apostles and prophets. And this is God's plan. Here he goes. He's going to package it. Both Gentiles and Jews who believe in the good news, that is, Jesus Christ came yeah, he died, he was buried, he rose again. <clears throat> they sh share equally in the riches inherited by God's children. Wow. Now both Jewish people and Gentile people share in this, this these privileges, the, the riches of being in Christ. Both are part of the same body and both enjoy the promises of blessings because they belong to Christ Jesus. By God's grace and mighty power, I have been given the privilege of serving him by spreading this good news. So he also explains it this way in chapter 2, verse 11. Don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. Remember, the Jews were insiders and Gentiles were outsiders. So don't forget, you were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision, even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. In those days, you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel because basically he built this huge wall around Israel and the temple and, and didn't allow Gentiles even to get in. Uh, so they turned it into this major, major issue in religion. Instead of being a blessing, they closed the Gentiles off. Anyway, let's get, let's get back to the scripture here. It says, and you did not know the covenant promises uh, God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope, but now you have been united with Christ Jesus. You were far, once you were far away from God, but now you've been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into, into one people when his own body or in his own body on the cross. He broke down the wall of hostility. Remember that wall we were talking about? He broke that wall of hostility down that separated us. He did this by ending the system of law with its commandments and regulations. 
he made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from two groups. So, so no longer was worship centralized in Israel and, and in the Jewish temple, which had been this, these huge walls built around him until, of course, it was destroyed in AD 70. And, and com- making it really complex and practically impossible for, for Gentiles to access God's grace, Jesus Christ, he ends this system and, and its commandments and regulations. And then he makes peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating a new people from the two groups. So you and I are part of a new humanity, a new ethnicity. You know, you think you're whatever, uh, maybe a U.S. citizen, and you get your privileges with that. And praise the Lord. You maybe you're maybe you're a citizen of Mexico. Praise the Lord. Great. You get benefits from that country. Maybe you're a citizen of of uh, a Middle Eastern country, uh, the UAE. Well, great. Praise the Lord. You've got you got some privileges because of that. But now, no matter what your ethnicity in Christ Jesus. You have been created into a new citizenship, a new people group, a new ethnicity. You know, it's it's fun to be proud. There's a song as Americans that we sing, I'm proud to be an American. And 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 it's we sing it with great pride. We do. I do. And, And 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 it's a huge honor. But it's it's not superior to my citizenship in Christ Jesus. That is far superior. That is the identity and ethnicity that I claim to. And and it, and it trumps it trumps all other citizen responsibilities and regulations and and um, uh, obligations and, and and pride that it creates in us. Again, I'm not, we're, Bible's not knocking, Paul's not knocking, no one's knocking ethnicity uh, um, or where, who you were born to. What, what he's presenting is that we are new creation in Christ Jesus, and that trumps everything. That's what we cling to. So let's finish up this section of Ephesians 2, 11. Together as one body. Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross. And our hostility toward each other was put to death. You know, just as a side note, there's so much racism around the world. Um, I'm recording from the United States, and it's just constant. It's so constant. Uh, Whites and blacks and blues and greens, I don't know what. Just constant, constant bickering back and forth. And that is the result of of, uh, distancing ourselves as humanity from God. Because this is God's plan right here. The hostility toward each other is put to death. And and, and we are brought together as different groups into one single ethnicity that that is uh, under the banner of Jesus Christ. And our identity is in Christ Jesus. And he empowers us through the Holy Spirit. And, and so that takes care of racism. It solves race racism when people come to Christ and, and then understand who they are in Christ Jesus and walk in that reality. Verse 17, he brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who are far away from him and peace to the Jews who are near. Now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. Wow. It's so nice to be brought and brought near to Christ. I'm going to conclude with this verse where Paul uh, talks about how this this unexpected blessing that that we have accessed now, um, and and he's he's writing to the church in Rome how Gentile believers in Macedonia and Achaia were giving money to help Jewish believers in Rome, and and, and it talks about how. Um, the Gentile believers are now sharing in this, this Jewish spiritual blessing, and, and they can benefit from Christ's death, and, and now they're being a blessing as well. well let's, let's read Romans 15, 25 to 27. Now, however, I'm on my way to Jerusalem in the service of the Lord's people there. 
For Macedonia and Achaia were pleased to make a contribution for the poor among the Lord's people in Jerusalem. They were pleased to do it, and indeed they owe it to them. For if the Gentiles have shared in the Jews' spiritual blessing, they owe it to the Jews to share with them in their material blessings. So guys, he's just like pointing out to the Gentiles, look guys, you're, 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 on, the, you're on the receiving end here. Don't get cocky. In fact, exercise this blessing that the Jewish people had a hard time expressing. You guys be the blessing and 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 give out of your material possessions that, that you're blessed with and, and give to the Jewish people. So this is what happens when one is truly transformed by, uh, by the person of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. We end up, we end up as beneficiaries uh, of this blessing, blessing others. I trust that today you'll be a blessing wherever you go and to whom you will meet in the area of influence in which God has given you. In our next recording, we're going to go through that third section um, of uh, God's plan with Israel. God bless. <music>